Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. How are you doing today? Not gonna complain. Um, I, I, you know, I, 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 this is the part of the show where I try and do something kind of fun, banter up top. My mind just blanked. You, you got any? You got any fun banter? Ah. Uh. Team, team Chaos struggling okay. two weeks in a We're row. Going right into it, which I'm fine yeah. with. Yeah, Team Chaos, Team Chaos struggling two weeks in a row. A lot, lot of, lot of opportunities there, but Team Chaos fell flat. Yeah, second week in a row. We didn't have any True Chaos last week either. Mm-mm. It's uh, yeah, Team Chaos needs to step its shit up. That being said. We did have five. We did have five ranked teams lose. Um, six, if you count Liberty, who wasn't ranked but was undefeated, and did have a pretty high spot in our tier list. So, speaking of that tier list, you want to jump into it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it here. So we have. Oh, shoot. Sorry. This is the wrong screen. This is the Sloop Pick oh. scoreboard. Um, Look at this. It, it's where, slowly creeping back. Slowly yeah, I had, I, had, I, back. I had a terrible week. Um, slowly creeping back. Yeah. The guest at Gangland. Where are you? You're, you're literally next, Stuart. You're right there. I'm pointing at the actual monitor, which doesn't make any sense. In, in regards to the show, but you're, you're literally right there. Um, and, and Stuart, like no pressure, man, but gangland <laughs> had a really good week in a week in which no one had a really good week. Like even in our CBS pick them, um, a lot of people struggled. Um, but I think four and three ties him for the best in the week. Um, but yeah, Kyle goes three and four. I go two and five. So no pressure, Stuart. But the guests are now tied with me in the lead. And Kyle mm-hmm. gained a game on me, which means he's now only one behind me for the season. So slip picks are heating up. If you want to hear us, listen. If you want to listen to us, if you want to hear us, listen to us, make those picks. Uh, you can watch the Friday episodes. All right, Kyle, now let's get into the tier list. Oh, no, no, nope, sorry. This is the Chaos Theory scoreboard. As Kyle pointed out, there was literally, uh, there, there was nothing to pick from. Gangland picked Kansas State to lose. Kyle picked Pitt to lose. I picked Penn State to lose. There were zero instances of a ranked team losing to an unranked team this week. There were no right answers. So. I feel like that's that's happened quite a bit. Quite a bit. Already. Happened last week. I know that I much. Yep. Now let's do the All right. list. All right. <laughs> Oregon. Stewart's talking shit or, in the trash. Uh, uh, talking trash. Oh, I, know, I can't. I, know. I can't. He, I can't do words. He's he's a he's a couple ahead of us, so he he, he can talk all he wants because he he is he is in that position there. So Oregon. Let's, let's start with Oregon. Um, convincing win over Illinois, thirty-eight to nine, and honestly, that nine points. Did that come towards the end? I felt like I felt like Oregon was like up thirty nothing at at one point. I might be uh, wrong. I don't specifically remember, but the game was never in doubt. It was it was yeah. at no point was that game ever in doubt. Nope. Um, I think Georgia was off. They were. Yeah, I, believe Georgia, I believe Georgia was off this week. Yeah, they were off this week, so they they stay where they're at. Texas, Vanderbilt, Jared. How about I've, been try- get- I've been trying to tell people, and every time I say it, people in the dang chat always like, oh, but it's Vanderbilt, Jared. But Jared, it's Vanderbilt. But Jared, it's Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. I keep trying to tell people that Vanderbilt's actually kind of good this year. Not great. Don't get me wrong. But they're not like the SEC whipping boy that people expect them to be. They're actually kind of decent this year. And they took Texas to the wire. Why yeah. don't people listen to me? Yeah, since since the towards the middle of the second quarter when Texas was up twenty one to seven, Vanderbilt went on a seventeen to six 
run there. Just to just to come up just short there on a on that onside kick. Um, they did get that touchdown under a minute left. Failed the failed the onside kick, but yeah, yeah. Vander, Vanderbilt giving Texas run for their money there, but unlike unlike Alabama, Texas does come out with the win here. Now, Kyle couple close calls for texas as of late they have they at one point they kind of look like an unstoppable juggernaut not so much anymore still favorites to win it all in your opinion among the favorites to win it all yeah absolutely yes they they, they got the offensive line they got the quarterback they they got the they got the defense so yes they, they stay nest here ohio state we talked in detail about ohio state on the monday episode I slid them over here to the right. They didn't look good against Nebraska. They lost to Oregon. They feel like they're on a downward trajectory off at major offensive line issues. Ohio state still list here. I I, I got, I got to keep Ohio state S tier mainly, mainly looking at their one loss, one point on the road in Eugene at night. Best loss in the country. It is the best loss in the country. And understand that they looked they looked terrible in this game. I mean, Texas didn't look all that great against Vanderbilt too. Now I know Nebraska is at Vanderbilt, but I'm still. sorry. Are, are you going to? Would you definitively say that Vanderbilt would like beat Nebraska? Yes. Definitively. Yes, definitively. Five out of five times. Five out of five. Five. Yeah. I don't. Agree. Nine out of ten. Yeah, nine out of ten. Yeah, I don't agree. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right, Penn State. Penn State uh, escapes Madison, Wisconsin. Here, uh, that that final score it was it was a lot closer than twenty eight to thirteen. There. Yeah, yeah. But they, yeah, did, does Penn State go up to S tier here? I mean, they they're they're undefeated here. They're Seven and zero here. They taking care of business here, but do, do you think they deserve to be up in S tier? Are they are they that kind of team that can win it all? No, I, I really don't think so. And maybe I'm just biased of what after watching James Franklin always underperform at the end of the season. Maybe this is the year they finally break through. Maybe this is the year James Franklin proves everyone wrong, but. And by the way, Drew Aller got hurt. Um, I I don't know if we have any official status on that. I'm sure that's a thing we'll be talking a lot about on the Thursday episode. Know your enemy when we're talking about Penn State. Um, listen, they play Ohio State next week. They win, they go up. I I feel comfortable just sort of leaving them where they are right now, and they can replace Ohio State if they win. Yeah, I, I think a, I think a tier, I think a tier is is fine. They're they're definitely on that cusp. They they win next weekend. They uh, they go up to S tier. So, Boise State, Boise State, uh, narrowly uh, escapes. Uh, where where did they go? I I lost my I lost my pick there. Yeah, they're there. Um, narrowly escapes the win. Against uh, UNLV, twenty nine to twenty four. Yeah, um, and UNLV not a bad football team, um, by any means. They're pretty decent this year. Um, not a, I, you know, if if that being said, I, I think we're still very comfortable calling Boise the best Group of Five team in the country. Fair. Fair. Yeah. I'd say that's fair. No. Who would you say is that team? Army. 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 Well, we'll we'll talk about it. All right. Um, Tennessee was on a bye week. Notre Dame. You might be biased. Yeah. Yeah. Notre Dame absolutely demolishes Navy. 51 to 14. You, you want to talk about. Penn State maybe moving up to S tier. Notre Dame has been very quietly getting better this year. 
Mm -hmm. And like they demolished Navy and granted Navy didn't really play anyone up until that game. But we all know, even when Navy is not great, they're still really tough to play against. Really good performance by Notre Dame. Um, at a certain point, and I'm not saying that's this week, but at a certain point, we need to start talking about them as an S tier team. Yeah, but as far as they lost to NIU, they, they, which is they, they did lose it. Yes, they did lose to Northern Illinois. Um, they had the they had a rough time against Miami, but took care of business down the road there. Close win against Louisville, but they, I, I honestly think they went out there in. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah. They went out there in, but and it's they're definitely a playoff team. Very favorable uh, schedule here. Florida State, Virginia, Army, and then USC. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty favorable. I, um, I'm, I'm still I'm still not a fan. I mean, defensively, I li- like Notre Dame's defense, but offensively, it's still still be desired here. Um, I think it's been getting better as the season goes. I think is the point I'm making. I I think that their offense is improving. I'm not saying it's fantastic or that it's great, but it's a lot better than it was. If you you haven't watched Notre Dame since September, you might be surprised at how competent (laughs) their offense is. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to say great, but it's a lot more competent than it was early on. I am not saying we do it now. I'm not saying we do it this no. week. I'm saying no. Okay. Um, BYU. Stewart says undefeated. Army will win November 23rd. We'll see. BYU defeats UCF 37 to 24 to remain undefeated. Yeah. Um, I, I think you. One of the very few teams undefeated still. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you stay there in the as a playoff team. And not to mention like we literally need a big 12 representative in the playoff per the yeah. rules. So that's, that's them at least for now. That's them. Indiana. Huge day. Huge day. Do we though? Against- I mean, yes, we're, we're literally predicting the playoff. So we do need a Big 12 team. They're a the Big 12 champion gets into the playoffs. Defeats Washington 31 to 17 for a two touchdown victory. This is, this is a good one. This is a really good one for, for Indiana here. I really 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 impressed with what I'm seeing with Indiana here. Um Ellison had a had a really good game here. He had a, about 120 yards or so. In this game, um, but the, I think it's really is the defense. The defense is what's really standing out to me in Indiana. I know Indiana in years past has had some years where it's like, oh, they're, they're this really pass happy team and they're able to put up a lot of yards and all that, and, but the defense always struggles. It, Indiana's defense is actually doing really, really good this year. Their head coach is amazing. Like he is just very clearly completely turned that team around. Um, He's a guy who wins football games like yep. somehow, some way dude just knows how to win football games. I, I don't know how else to say it other than that. Yep. Uh, uh, Miami. S- hold on. Stewart asks, Indiana versus Penn State neutral site, who you got? I know my answer. I think at this point, as we're recording this, I I'd pick the um the Hoosiers. Yeah. I agree. I I I, I would pick Indiana as well. Mm-hmm. I would. Yeah. Miami. What 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 the hell happened to Florida State? I don't uh, terrible what? offense, but you want to know, like, do you want to know their offensive line is shit? 
They have an um, they have incredible talent on that team, but their offensive line sucks. It is really sometimes that simple. The M tier, which we had Florida State in M tier since like week two. Yeah. I think it's too generous for Florida State (laughs) at this point. (laughs) I get what you're saying. We don't have a tier lower than that, though, Kyle, but I hear what you're saying. It's almost insulting to Oklahoma State and USC to be on that same level as them. Not Michigan. I mean, this is this is this is. This is like. Like Rich Rod years M tier bad. I think that's insulting to Rich Rod. (laughs) I. Yeah. But Miami, Miami with another win. Um, are you still comfortable with them? Well, we, we we don't need to have that conversation yet. LSU. LSU loses. They they uh, lose they lost to pretty decisively. Texas A&M. Yeah, 3823. Yeah. It's it's hard going on the road and winning. It it's it, it really is. So we bump LSU down. Um, are you comfortable? You know, we'll just, we'll just leave them right here for right now. And we'll have that conversation later. Um, they, so we remove a team from a tier, which means we need to place a team into a tier to replace them because S and a need to have a total of 12 teams because we are predicting the playoff here. Kyle and I will have a conversation about who to replace them with after this quick ad break. See, that's a tease. That's a tease. Uh, the sloopcast.com, you can find all of our links there. You can find a link to our Spotify page, our Apple podcast page. Um, you can find a link to our Discord server where we are always hanging out and chatting, both Kyle and I um, and a bunch of diehard Ohio State fans. Um, YouTube.thesloopcast.com where you can find all of our videos. I already talked about the Apple and Spotify pages. There's also the RSS feed where you can manually pop that into a a podcasting app. You can find all of these links at the sloopcast.com, um, including our Patreon link where you can contribute to the show financially. And speaking of RSS links, you get your very own private RSS link that pulls directly from Patreon, or you can just listen to it on the Patreon app, but it pulls directly from Patreon. That way, when you listen to the show, you don't get these annoying Spreaker ads that you're about to get right now. So if you want to avoid those ads, uh, you can join the, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Here are those ads now. Okay. So I teased, I teased that I did, but the answer is obvious, right? It, it's it's the team who beat them. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Texas yeah. A&M. Yeah, that that was that was kind of a lousy tease. If anyone actually put any thought to it or looked at the chart, because the answer was pretty obvious. Um, I think we even said it on last week's collegiate chaos. Like, you know, if Texas A&M beats LSU, they move up to A tier. They'll swap. So it's it's an obvious move, but there it is. So. Looking at our A tier right now and looking at who we have as, you know, our better teams in B tier, who I have slotted over here to the left. Is there anyone currently in B tier? And and I'll, I'll go ahead and say these out loud real quick for the podcasting audience. Clemson, SMU, Kansas State, Army, Iowa State, Alabama and Pitt that should replace any of our A tier teams who are currently Penn state, Boise, Tennessee, Notre Dame, BYU, Indiana, Miami, and Texas A&M. I can't, I can't, I can't think of a reason. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. 
And I know the AP and the coaches poll don't really matter. Stuart does, wants us. does not matter. Stuart wants but, us to put Army up there so bad. But Pitt, Pitt and Army, but but Pitt is getting like no no love from the media and the coaches right now. They're, they are 7-0, yet are behind a um, number of teams who have one and two losses as well, too. And this coming coming... Coming, coming behind a a solid victory over a, a not an, 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 a pretty good uh, maybe I shouldn't say pretty good but it, but it, but a good a confident Syracuse, Syracuse team, team. forty one to thirteen yeah that that defense eight they yeah, they yeah. they had a buffet they had a buffet against Syracuse <laughs> against Kyle McCord specifically yes. Um, um, but, but, to, but who, who to, who to replace? I, I don't see it. I don't know. I, 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 I can't really see. I can't really see. Don't make me get a right water now. bottle. Stuart wants us to put army up into a tier so bad. Hey, our, my, my studio is very real. Thank you. Gosh, boys, do I need to touch something boys, back here to prove it? This is, this is not a blue screen. Boise, Boise State is just going to run the table. They have, they play nobody. They play nobody. You could probably just say the same thing about Miami at this point too. I mean, the, Miami will at least play presumably Clemson or Pitt in the ACC title game, so they'll have that going for them. Yeah, that that is true. Um. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Who ends up in the ACC title game? Miami, Clemson, and Pitt all undefeated, at least in conference play. SMU is undefeated, too, in conference. Oh, yeah. And, Listen, and SMU I may that, have, for, that over, I may that have forgot SMU was in Duke. the ACC. <laughs> Caught. <laughs> Caught. I may have forgot. Clemson does not play Miami or SMU. But Clemson plays Pitt? They do. Okay. All right. All right. They do. Does SMU do SMU and Miami play? No. Good Lord. SMU plays Pitt. So Pitt. Pitt has the toughest has the oh toughest boy. road here. They play SMU this weekend. All right. That's that's it. Who who would have thought back in August that we'd be standing here right now going, ooh, SMU Pitt. <laughs> and then Pitt has uh plays Virginia the week after that, and then Clemson. They, they, they got they got two tough games in three weeks there. So see you, Stuart. Yep, thanks, Stuart. Hey, they, they got a they got a tough schedule here, so they they can either move up or down quickly here. So, <laughs> yeah, hey Pitt, all you gotta do is win, buddy. Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is win. Just just win your games. Just that easy. Just all win right, your games. Illinois, Illinois, love the Cinderella story, but it's I, I think it's time so to bump them down. We, hold C, on, real quick. Tier. Are we officially locking in S and A tier? Yes. Okay. Yes. Illinois lo loved loved the story there, but against your two against your two um, teams that uh, got a chance to make a name, make make a splash, and you only put up seven points in each of those games. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you it, was, it was it was a fun, it was a fun story while it lasted. It was, and same same thing with Liberty. Same thing with Liberty. Eh. I wouldn't say I had fun with the Liberty story personally. And Navy lo loved the story too, but I mean, you, you lose even just one game it, unless, unless you have a schedule and, to back that up. And they got, and they got blown out. They did. Yep. I mean, yeah, they got run off the field. I mean, as, as Kyle said, when you don't, when you don't have much of a schedule, 
And when you finally get to play someone and you get blown out, that's it. But Missouri, what? Yeah, they should be should be in that C tier as well. But how how is Missouri still ranked? I don't know. They didn't put up a single point. I don't they didn't know. Put up a single point against Alabama. They, it's, they put up ten. They put up ten points against Texas A and M. They they struggled versus every top team that they've played. In Missouri's defense, they were without their starting quarterback for most of the Texas A and M game and most of the Alabama game. That's devastating. Okay. I mean, yeah, that is. It, that's that absolutely is. devastating. Um, they would have been better if they had. I mean, like it, Kyle, they brought in the backup and the backup just immediately started throwing interceptions. Like it, it was a devastating drop off for Missouri. It's. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. They lost the games, but it's not. They, they're just a different team with their starting quarterback. And that could be said about most teams in college football. So it's just an unfortunate break for Missouri, quite frankly. Losing Brady Cook is season ending for them. As you know, we're Ohio State fans. We're looking at, you know, is losing Josh Simmons and the fallout from an already thin offensive line losing one of your better offensive linemen, you know, one of your two best offensive linemen on the, on the team, you know, is that going to be season ruining for Ohio state? And, you know, it's a thing we're going to have to keep an eye on and the thing we're going to have to watch Missouri losing Brady cook is season ruining for them, which sucks because they have an incredibly talented offense and a pretty good defense, but they don't have a second quarterback and in the age of the transfer portal, there's not a lot of teams that do yep. quite frankly. The, the, the days of Cardell Jones being your third quarterback on the roster are over. Cardell Jones would have transferred out of Ohio to, would have transferred out of Ohio state in this era. And I'm not, that's and he should have quite frankly. Is what it is. All right. The uh, Ellis, B, B, B tier. Or, uh, B tier we already moved pretty... LSU down to B tier. Are we keeping them in B tier? Yep. They. I think they. They stay in B tier. They. They got a shot. I. They really do have a shot. I'm looking at the. Looking at the SEC here in conference. Yeah, because that's their first conference loss. It is. Yep. So there are one, two, three, four. There are five teams in SEC with zero or one loss in conference. Texas A&M is sitting up top, five and zero in conference. And then Georgia, Texas, Tennessee, and LSU sitting behind there uh, with one loss in conference. All right, Kyle, we have. We don't need Liberty over there. There's a there's a bunch of teams. There's a bunch of teams we can we can talk about here. Yeah. We don't need Illinois. We just dropped them down. Uh UNLV, I still think's a really good team, but they just lost. So we probably don't want them over I, there. I think I honestly think, Jared, we're we're getting to this point of the of the year. We're 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 at the end of October. And also this this sounds about right here with um with less and less teams that be that's coming off of the bubble there. Sure. Not really going to have a chance here. So Th this is how this chart should go. I, it I should think, start top heavy and trickle there's down. One team. There's one team we do have to add. Back. I do believe there's one team. And that's because they have a chance to win their conference. And if you have a chance to win their conference, you got to put them there. That's literally the and, playoff bubble. And we came off with a 34 to 23 victory. Um, against Cincinnati here, it's Colorado. Got to move Colorado up at, in the playoff bubble. I agree. I mean, the, the Big 12 is what the Big 12 is. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to 
someone's going to have to win that conference and Colorado is in good position to win that conference. Do I think right. anyone from the big 12 can make a deep move into the playoffs? No, I don't. But we need to have big 12 representation in the playoff bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, we have BYU in a tier. We have Kansas state, Iowa state, and now Colorado in B tier. Yep. And I don't think looking at the the other teams who have maybe two losses in conference, it's not worth not worth mentioning them at all yet. Duke, no. Duke Duke just lost. I don't know why you're moving Duke over to I'm just the far I'm just there. arranging things. Okay. Uh, Duke looked good in their loss for what it's worth to SMU. It was a one point loss to they, SMU. They did, but they The ACC is too crowded. Pulled. It is too crowded. They, and that was their second conference loss, too. So there are there are four undefeated in conference teams in the ACC right now. Obviously, a lot of that's going to change here in the next two, three weeks here, but currently there's four undefeated conference teams in the ACC. Yeah. Um, quite the frankly, only you can, Memphis? The only one you, you could. The only one I think, if if I'm staying with the ACC, the only one I think if you were to possibly move them in, and maybe you move them in the left side, see how they do. They only have one loss in the ACC, um, and that's the Hokies. Okay, I'll do that. I'll move those. They had a, they had a seven point loss to Vanderbilt, which does not look bad. In three retrospect, loss, no. Three point loss to Rutgers. And a four-point loss to Miami. Okay. I mean, yeah, we can move them over there. I'm not against mm-hmm. that. Uh, just how, cra- how, crazy sort of- would that, how crazy would that be, though? See, seeing, seeing the Hokies coming in here. They, they play Syracuse this weekend. They do, they do host Clemson in two weeks. They just say they just somehow miraculously come up with the upset in that game, and then they finish off with Duke and Virginia. There's a there's a real shot that Virginia Tech could could make it to the ACC championship game here. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, keep, keep keep Virginia Tech off to the left there. All right, Kyle. Memphis. We just moved Liberty out of B tier. Um. Memphis. Memphis's only loss this year is to Navy. It wasn't a good loss. They gave up 56 points. They scored 44. So it was a two score loss. Um, And they wouldn't have what I would call a signature win on the schedule. I'm not doing a good job selling this by any means. Florida State. Come on. Yeah. For the podcast listeners, this gave Kyle a real dirty look. Um I I am just we don't have another group of five team, but we do have Army. I take that back. So, you know, maybe we don't need to press Memphis up into B tier. Um no. be, because right now, if Boise loses. And I guess it depends upon how they lose and yada, yada, yada. I don't know who we have to replace Boise because I love the army story and no offense, Stuart, but I I don't see army finishing the season uh, undefeated. Um, And as far as Memphis is concerned, left on their schedule is UTSA, Rice, UAB and Tulane. So it's, they're not going to have an opportunity to prove themselves. Um, the, the, the only way, the only way is if army wins, wins out, they go undefeated and then Memphis beats army in the AAC. Yeah. That, that's, that's the only way that I could see. That's fair. Memphis and army wins out and Memphis beats army. Yeah. But do we really think army is going to beat Notre Dame at this point? The answer to that is no. I'm going to say no. Yeah, the answer yeah. to that is no. Um, okay. 
I, I mean, who knows? Anything can happen any given Saturday, but I don't see it. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just generally was looking for another team to move up into B tier from the group of five, just so we have a little bit of a safety net. Because I don't think Army's going to last. And I do think Boise has a decent chance of lasting. But what if they don't? Um, so I don't know. I, I And I, I just didn't have any, especially with UNLV losing, I just didn't have any, of course, Boise is the one to beat them. But I just didn't have any better options. Yeah. So I don't know. That's that's the only reason why I even have Memphis over to the left at this point. OK, Kyle, I think we're going to take a quick peek, a quick preview at next week's games. Uh, maybe even figure out what our sloop picks are going to be ahead of time or at least get a decent idea of it. But before we do that, um, let's uh, take another quick ad break. Uh, I already told you guys about all the different things you can sign up for. You can find all of those links at thesloopcast.com. I do want to draw your attention, if you're watching the YouTube video, um, to the T-shirts we have going on the bottom of the screen there. Um, you can buy all of these T-shirts either at merch.thesloopcast.com for our stuff that is like Sloopcast related, like podcast merch, um, and then over on the 7071 store, which is 7071, uh, which you can find at 7071.thesloopcast.com. Um, it's a bunch of just like Ohio based merch. There's a bunch of stuff that has like a bunch of different cities represented, um, just a bunch of fake sports franchises from around the city, some old sports franchises, defunct uh sports franchises like the uh Portsmouth Spartans um the Canton Bulldogs um the Columbus Panhandles um there's a lot of those logos up there both the classic versions of the logos and I like did a reimagined updated version of those as well you can find all that stuff out there uh on like I said 7071.thesloopcast.com a lot of cool designs out there go check them out um, and, uh, if you want to avoid the upcoming ad breaks, that's, that's what Patreon's for. Uh, but I talked about them, that in the first ad break, so I don't need to go over that again, but here are those ads now. All right, Kyle, what do we got on the schedule college football wise for next week? Premier game uh, well, is going to be Ohio before, state and Penn state, right? Yes. Before, before that. No, oh, okay. Um, this this is the last this is the last week before we have our Maction week. Okay. So just that when we talk a week from today, we're gonna to be talking about some good old Maction. <laughs> good. Good, good. <laughs> Tuesday uh, night Maction. Tuesday night, right? Surprise Wednesday night. Surprisingly so yeah. Um actually that's not gonna be a good game. Never mind. Yeah. Saturday <laughs> Uh, yep, Jared mentioned Ohio State, Penn State, noon on Fox. Not not a night game, not a wideout. Just a just a noon game on Fox. Um, scrolling down, we have a uh, Friday night. Scrolling down, Friday night. Uh, we have San Diego State and Boise, which yeah, that, that's what I was looking at. But yeah. eh, you know, it's not going to be a slip yeah. pick by any means, Kyle. No. Kyle, can your hometown Duke boys take out Miami? Not even the same city. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. Sorry, I'll keep my jokes limited to NC State in the future. <laughs> Oregon, Oregon is a 15 and a half point favorite over Michigan this weekend. Nice. In Ann Arbor. Nice. Um, I think, and what, what what time is that game? That's a three thirty kickoff. It's not great for Oregon. Not noon. It's not I noon. Know, it's not noon. It's not noon. It's not noon, but still not great for Oregon. Um, Army Air Force play. 
uh, Illinois, Minnesota play. Um, Georgia and Florida play. That, that hey, world's to, largest cocktail party. Sometimes can be an interesting They game don't still here, call it that anymore, do they? Didn't they change it? Because God forbid oh. you relate a God. student activity to drinking like that ever happens. Um, <laughs> it, it is a neutral site. It Jackson is a neutral Dome. site. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Always is. Always yep. is. Um, I don't know, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm not, I still expect Georgia to win, but yeah. you, never, you never know. Uh, Florida's not. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if Florida's been playing better in October yeah, than I, September or if they've yeah, just know. been playing worse teams. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I have not been watching Florida close enough to actually know. I know that their final scores have looked better. That's basically all I know. What about what about Indiana, a seven point favor on the road to Spartan Stadium? Really? I, that line's gonna move. That line's gonna move. Only seven points. Are you serious? How about this one? Seven and one Texas AM on the road to Columbia, South Carolina, yeah, as a three and a half point favorite. I I think South Carolina's not a bad football team. They're one of the better unranked teams in the country. Um, I mean, that's not a high bar to say they're top 30, but not top 25. That's not like a super high bar, but they are one of the can better you, unranked can, teams in the country. Can you tell me their best victory though? No. I, it's probably it this weekend. It was, it was this weekend against Oklahoma. Yeah. Like I, I'm aware. Uh, I'm I noticed that I didn't even bring them up. Although I did have them on the left side of the, of the graphic. I didn't even bring them up as a team to move up into B tier. Like I'm not, I'm not pounding yeah. the table for for South they're, Carolina. They're two. They're two and three. They're two and three in the SEC. Yeah, they're, they're they have no no way of moving up. I agree. I agree. I'm just okay. Saying that they are not a bad football team. They're whatever better the than over, the whatever the over under is in this next game here, Jared. Pick the under. It's Wisconsin and uh, Iowa. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Uh, Kyle, you think Louisville has a chance to maybe pull some magic against Clemson? Uh, Louisville, Louisville is kind of struggling, struggling recently. They, they are. They, they barely came out with a win up against Boston College. They lost in a high scoring to Miami, which I guess, I guess is a good loss. They struggled with a um, barely beat a pretty bad Virginia team. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Uh, 11, 11 and a half point favorite for, for Clemson. Now, maybe, maybe if this was in, in Kentucky here, but right now this is, this is in uh, Clemson. So it always weirds me out. That that's also the name of the town. Um, speaking of Kentucky, Kentucky, Tennessee. Kentucky's not, I don't think it's been the same since they were, they were, they were a September team. And that, that was it. They they just lost to Auburn. Yeah. Oh, did they? I didn't even see that. They, That's bad. 24 to 10. That's to Auburn? Isn't that like Auburn's second win of the season? Third. But their first first in conference. Though. Oh yeah. Definitely their first in conference. <laughs> um I think I think a fun game could be watches USC and Washington. I think that could be a fun game to watch if you're if you're wanting to stay up that late. Yeah, there's too many. Uh, there, there's I think. Oh, it's it's only seven thirty. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, I Pittsburgh, SMU, uh, that, that Louisville, would, would, Clemson, Texas A&M, South Carolina. I think you have better options in the primetime window. I, th I think we're, I think we're going to struggle, Jared, of choosing a a um three thirty chaos pick. A chaos oh. pick. <laughs> that too. <laughs> both, like both are true. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, the uh, the noon window is pretty weak outside of Ohio State and Penn State, obviously. Um, midday window is not bad. Primetime is pretty decent. There's at least some upset potential in the primetime window. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the most marquee game out here this week outside of Ohio State and Penn State. I'm about to say it. Yep. Is it Pitt's? Is it Pitt and SMU? Yeah. God, maybe, that's sad. Maybe. I mean, you could like Oregon and Michigan will probably get like the ratings, right? Those are two marquee names. Yeah. But Oregon's I mean, gonna destroy them. Yeah. Maybe Ford and Georgia too. I maybe, but outside of that, outside of those, no, not 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 really. Which mean which means Jared, we may see some upsets then. We yeah, because honestly, then. How, honestly, how it kind of looks like a kind of a weak week outside of Ohio State, Penn State. Oh boy, <laughs> I know I'm jumping way ahead though. But week eleven though. Oh, well, why are we? What are you? Why are we Ooh. going into week eleven? <laughs> week eleven is going to be fun. Has has potential to be fun, but but. Let's, let's not that get is, ahead of ourselves. Is, that, is talk, that is talks for another episode. Am I really going to have to put Pitt and SMU in the huh? Sloop Picks thumbnail? You are. You are. Really? Yep. I feel like I need to put, I feel like I need, I feel like it needs to be Oregon, Michigan. I got to get clicks, Kyle. No one's going to click an SMU Pitt thumbnail. I guess do George and Florida then, Jared. That, that'll get the clicks, right? Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. But you know what? That's that's for me to figure out later this week um, in preparation for the sloop picks. But yeah, that's it. That's that's it for collegiate chaos this week. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um Columbus Crew play um gets their kickoff against uh New York Red Bulls this Tuesday in their first first match of the uh of the playoffs here. So uh, go, best of luck to the Columbus crew, which by the way, Jared is, I made this joke once in our, in our uh, discord already, but it's Columbus now a soccer city. Colum- Columbus crew. Um, one of the best in the MLS and your Ohio state Buckeye men's soccer team ranked at number one in the polls. Yes, sir. It might be a soccer town now. No, Kyle. You, and crew, we two, both, and crew two is not that. And crew two is not too shabby too. We we all know this is a synchronized swimming town. And pistol, but primarily synchronized swimming. That that <laughs> that is that is what we do here. All right. Anything else in Kyle's corner? Um. I just shout out to all of the Ohio high school football teams as we are, we're ready for playoffs as well. It's playoff it's playoff season for Ohio high school this this upcoming weekend here. But I know I know the fir- the first weekend is always kind of lackluster because it's a bunch of top teams beating up on ever since they teams who barely made them in ever since yeah, they blew up since the they playoff. It. Yeah, it's like it's like eighteen teams now per per um division division or or regional now which is it's crazy crazy how many there are now but it's it's like the bowl games you, you go 500 you have a chance to make the bowl game that's yeah. not how it used to be <laughs> yeah well the bowl games will be dead soon don't worry about it um mm-hmm. move the bowl games uh, the bowl games should be week zero change yeah. my mind but, but shout out shout out to my hometown Columbus Grove football team destroying Bluffton who was undefeated in uh division six, which Columbus grows division seven. Uh, so shout out to them with their conference victory against Bluffton and they will make their campaign this playoffs and see, see how they do. Hey. Of, of course they, they, it's, it's that one team that always, it's always, is always the tough team in division seven. 
Anybody who's in Ohio know, knows this school. Do you know this school, Jared? Listen, I forget that there's a Division 7 now. I'm going to say the name, you'd be like, oh yeah, I've heard of them. Probably. They're, they are the Flyers. Marion Stein, Marion Local. Marion Local? Yeah, I've heard Marion Local. Mm -hmm. they, 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 now, they now own the, um, the Ohio High School uh, football record for most consecutive wins. It's like 56 or 57 wins, something like that. In a wow. Row. I mean, no one's going to get close to that team in California did with 150 some, but but still who knows? over. Who knows? Yeah, that's why you play the game. But they, they <laughs> I know I'm going on a rant here, but Marion local though have only lit up 22 points all year. Wow. Zero in their last five games. Wow, that's insane. Inclu including one of the top teams. In, can, can we just bump them up in, a division? In, into Division Six, uh, feel, cold water. Like, like they they shut the, they shut them out. So I'm like, I don't want to play. Don't want to play Mary Local. But if you're going to win the the uh, championship, you got to play them some sometime. <laughs> hey, good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Is that it for Kyle's Corner? That's it. Okay. Uh, tonight's ending music will be a band out of Columbus called Paper Morning. So uh, stick around, check them out. If you're listening to the podcast version of this show, if you're not listening to the podcast version and you're watching this on YouTube, uh, we, we can't play music like that on YouTube. So the link is down in the show notes. You can go listen to it and also throw them a like and also throw them a, a subscription. So uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Paper Morning. <laughs>